Exposition by Charles Hedden Spurgeon Exodus 25, 10-22, Psalm 32 Exodus 25, 10, 11 And they shall make an ark of shittim wood, two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof and you shall overlay it with pure gold, within and without shall you overlay it, and shall make upon it a crown of gold round about. The Ark of the Covenant was the most sacred object in the tabernacle in the wilderness. It stood at the extreme end of the Holy of Holiest. It was the place over which the bright shining light called the Shekinah, which was the token of the presence of God, shone forth. The Ark was, doubtless, typical of our Lord Jesus Christ. It was a sacred chest made to contain the law of God. Blessed are they who know the law in Christ. Out of Christ, the law condemns. In Christ, it becomes a blessed guide to us. This ark was made of wood, perhaps to typify the human nature of our blessed Lord, but it was of wood which did not rot, acacia, which resists the worm and, truly, in him there was no corruption in life by way of sin, and no corruption sullied him in death when he slept for a while in the grave. Wood is a thing that grows out of the earth, even as Jesus sprang up like a root out of a dry ground. But the ark must be made of the best kind of wood, no presence of rot and untainted. Yet the ark, though made of wood, did not appear to be so, for it was completely overlaid with pure gold, so, everywhere, the deity, or, if you will, the perfect righteousness of Jesus Christ could be seen. The ark was of shittim wood, yet it was an ark of gold, and he, who was truly man, was just as truly God, blessed be his holy name. Round about the top of this ark there was a crown of gold. How glorious is Christ, in his mediation, as covering the law and preserving it within himself. He is king, glorious in holiness and honored in the midst of his people. 12 to 14. And you shall cast four rings of gold for it, and put them on the four corners thereof, and two rings shall be on the one side of it, and two rings on the other side of it, and you shall make staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with gold. And you shall put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark, that the ark may be born with them. The rings were, of course, for the staves to pass through and the staves were for the priests to carry the ark as it moved from place to place. It went with the children of Israel in all their journeys, and our Lord Jesus is always with us. He goes with us wherever we go and tarries with us wherever we abide. Though his glorified person is in heaven, yet his presence is not restricted to any one place, as he said to his disciples. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. 15. The staves shall be in the rings of the ark, they shall not be taken from it so that it was always ready to be moved. 16. And you shall put into the ark, the testimony which I shall give you. That is to say, the two tablets of stone were to be put into the ark of the covenant. 17. And you shall make a mercy seat of pure gold, two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. It exactly fitted upon the top of the ark, and so completely covered whatever was put within. It was of pure gold. This, perhaps, was the most important part of this very important article of the tabernacle furniture. It was the mercy seat, the cover that hid the law of God, the place where God promised to meet with his people.
1820. And you shall make two cherubims of gold, of beaten work shall you make them, on the two ends of the mercy seat and make one cherub on the one end, and the other cherub on the other end, even of the mercy seat shall you make the cherubims on the two ends thereof, and the cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another, toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be. They were part and parcel of the mercy seat. They were made of the same precious metal and all formed one piece. They may represent the angels who stand desiring to look into the mysteries of God, and they may also represent the church, which is all of a piece with Christ, forever one with him. 21, 22. And you shall put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and in the ark you shall put the testimony that I shall give you. And there I will meet with you and I will commune with you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim which are upon the ark of the testimony, of all things which I will give you in commandment unto the children of Israelite he was the meeting place of God in men, where the law was covered with a solid plate of gold, so is Jesus the meeting place between God and sinners, where the law is covered with his perfect righteousness. Psalm 32, 1. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. That is a wonderful word, almost the same in Hebrew as in English, covered, hidden, concealed, put away, removed, dismissed forever. 2. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputes not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. 4. When sin is gone, men become honest before God. The fear of punishment makes them endeavor to evade the truth concerning sin, but, when they see sin pardoned, then are they honest before the Lord. 3. When I kept silent, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. I have heard that certain diseases, when they are suppressed, are all the more terrible and deadly. And, certainly, suppressed sin, or suppressed sorrow for sin which has no vent by way of confession before God, is a dreadful thing. It seems to eat into the very bones, my bones waxed old, like a strong acid eating into the very pillars of our manhood. 4. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. The mere touch of God's finger would be enough to crush us, but when he comes to deal with us in conviction and lays his heavy hand upon us, it is, indeed, terrible. We are then like Gideon's fleece when he squeezed all the moisture out of it. 4, 5. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. Sula. I acknowledged my sin unto you, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressors unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Salah. Being confessed, it was forgiven. Being acknowledged, it was blotted out. 5. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto you in a time when you may be found. If you, O Lord, hear a sinner cry unto you, then surely you will hear your saints when they cry unto you yet more and more. If seekers become finders, then others will become seekers, too. 6, 7. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come near unto him. You are my hiding place, you shall preserve me from trouble. You shall compass me about with songs of deliverance. Salah. What a blessed experience that is, to be surrounded with songs, to hear music on the right and music on the left, singing behind me for mercy received, singing before me for hopes yet to be fulfilled, singing above me, 
the angels welcoming me when my time comes to go home to my father's house. You shall compass me about with songs of deliverance. Now the Lord speaks to his servant. 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you shall go, I will guide you with my eyes. Therefore, keep your eye on me, notice every movement of my eyes and be ready and obedient, at the slightest sign, to do my will. 9. Be you not as the horse, or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto you. Be not hard in the mouth. Be not stubborn, willful, obstinate, rebellions. 10. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked. They pursue pleasure as if it belonged to them alone. They talk about a short life and a merry one. Poor things, how sadly mistaken they are. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked. They have a terrible inheritance and a dreadful entail of suffering. 10, 11. But he that trusts in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, you righteous and shout for joy. Be demonstrative about it, make other people hear of it. Do not be ashamed to let your holy joy be known. Be not so very proper and orderly as to mumble out your praises as some do, be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy. 11. All you that are upright in heart, 